council member Valerie Nicholas, who's very passionate about homelessness, especially in Laurel. Council member Nicholas, can you talk to me about this issue that's very near to your heart? Yes, I can. I'd first like to say thank you for having me. Um, when I got the call, I was very excited to be here because there is a serious issue in Laurel regarding homelessness. Um, prior to getting on the city council, I was feeding the homeless and providing services. Um, it's, this is like my 21st year. Mm -hmm. um, I prepare meals every day that I serve throughout the city and actually across the line over at the um, Valencia the turf, I go to the Garden Inn, mm -hmm. I do uh, feed uh, some residents in the city, and I go Main Street, and here around by the library area is where I also serve. You say every day you get up at three o'clock in the morning. What are you doing and why are you doing it? I'm doing it because I've been in this city, I've been in, in the Maryland area for a little over 30 years. I am from Roanoke, Virginia, and when I first moved up here, I came with $4.73. I didn't have a car, and I used to catch the bus and subway downtown. When I went downtown, that was the first time I had ever saw a person on the street begging for food. Mm -hmm. And it disturbed me. I, I, I didn't understand it. I'd never seen it. Mm -hmm. And all day, I was just so puzzled by someone not having anything to eat or a place to go. So I started preparing sandwiches, and I would take them in my tote bag, and I would give them out mm -hmm. um, to people that I would see at the subway. And it really took on another life. Um, here it is 30 years later, and I feel like I have expanded. I have a food pantry in my home. I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I prepare meals, and I have those meals served before I report to work. Um, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I prepared, uh, well, Thanksgiving in particular, I made 20, I cooked about 26 turkeys, and my neighbor cooked four, and I served um, my homemade potato salad, which seems to be my signature dish, um, greens and um, the turkey with all the trimmings and um, it was just so fulfilling for me to serve yeah. people. I, the focus is not the food. The focus is just building that relationship uh, to gain their trust so I can connect them with the services that they need. It seems again that it has really taken on a life of itself um, I do also have what's called a blessing bag, and they are Ziploc bags that have uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, a snack, mm -hmm. um, hand sanitizer, and I do also have my contact information in it, and I have a biblical little scripture. I said when I first got appointed and elected to the city council that my platform would be just to operate with integrity, that I would not go out in disgrace, and that my vote would never be for sale. Um, I have created a slogan that I put now at the end of my letters that say, I live my life for God in public on purpose. Mm -hmm. And it certainly for me has been an honor to serve. It's an honor to help people in whatever capacity. Since this is my third term, just being elected in November of last year, re-elected, um, I just look at this as a delight. I look at it as an opportunity for me to be a voice for other people. Um, I get calls all times of the night, knocks on my door, when I see people on the street, and I just really think it's very important as an elected official to stay focused and to stay um, reachable and teachable, but just to stay uh, in the public eye and to let people know that I'm out here for them and fighting for the people. Yes, yeah, so you said it's not about the food, it's about the mission. So what do you think it will take in order to eradicate this problem in Laurel? The biggest thing that I have seen just with the services that I provide mm -hmm. is people being unemployed. Um, the extreme poverty is it's really extreme. Mm -hmm. um, people not having the health care benefits. Um, I think the housing vouchers are a big deal. I have a lot of women that also call me about domestic violence. As you may have read, I'm a survivor of domestic violence. My mm -hmm. baby was killed as a result of, re of mm -hmm. abuse in 1995. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of parents um, that reach out to me to want to ask to be mentors to their daughters. So I speak in a lot of churches, I'm speaking in schools, and I'd like to just continue to do that. Um, what I have found just in my travels around the city is there's a lack of medical benefits. Mm -hmm. 
um, housing vouchers are way on the rise. I think the homeless popula population has tripled. Um, again, healthcare benefits, people not being able to be employed because they don't have any of the job training. And if, they, if you do get a job that's at a minimum wage level, it's not enough to afford. The average apartment you're looking at is anywhere from 900 up to 2,000. I mean, there are places that are $2,500 to rent. Mm -hmm. um, and a person who is unskilled, uneducated, can't find that. They may be able to get a room. And just in my um, experience in, in trying to help people um, secure rooms, that's be, even become challenging because they're asking for a thousand to twelve hundred dollar security deposit for that. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem. It's a, it's a cycle that has to be broken. I think one of the things is education, educating other public officials mm -hmm. um, all over the state of Maryland, and just um, having a, a a dialogue about what could be done to get people off of the street. Um, mental health is another thing that is just exploded. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of people that um, not, are not employable. There are a lot of people that have mental health issues need mental health service, whether that is an inpatient or outpatient can be based on you know, a case by case. But um, I well, just- Here's, a, here's what I, I think. I think that and just by doing some reports and reading, mm -hmm. that what, what's going on in Laurel is actually um, trickling out from the city of D.C. So you mm -hmm. have D.C., then you have Maryland, you have Virginia, you have all these different areas mm -hmm. that are having this issue of homelessness, affordable housing, and Laurel is, you know what I mean, like caught up in that, right. that issue. Is there um, anything that's going on with partnerships, you know, with the district or um, maybe Montgomery County, Prince George's County, or is there something that's happening on a larger scale to help, um, I guess, government officials address this issue, but in a collaborative way? Well, to answer one part of your question yes. is, Laurel is uniquely placed and it's sitting in different counties. Mm -hmm. This is a transit area. Um, it's close to the highways, it's close to other modes of, tran you know, areas of transportation. So I think people that are coming from D.C., Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Baltimore, mm -hmm. some of them are coming to this area. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there should be some sort of partnerships formed. Again, mm -hmm. I think the dialogue is going to be important. There should be some, uh, if, if there are conference calls or, or mm -hmm. sem not necessarily seminars, but just meetings with housing, uh, housing mm -hmm. uh, authorities, mm -hmm. uh, associations, nonprofits to where we could come together collectively to address the problems and see what we can do as partners in our own, within our own um, areas. Um, whether that will happen, I don't know. I know that I reach out to a lot of contacts I have in Baltimore. Um, I have talked to a couple of people in DC, but I know um, like with the social services, I have reached out to several of their case managers there that um, are very helpful mm -hmm. to me. Um, I have done a lot of work and partnered with churches. Mm -hmm. I think that the Laurel Winter Shelters have been wonderful in providing mm -hmm. housing, uh, temporary housing. Mm -hmm. I think they have the seven day where they just stay at one church seven mm -hmm. day and they go to another one. Laurel, uh, Lars, excuse me, was very much involved in that. Mm -hmm. Everybody collectively did a wonderful job. I think that there are more services, there are more people than surfaces. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, you know, maybe at the governor's level, we could go and talk with the governor just about the problems, not just in Laurel, but just for the entire, entire state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is really growing from looking at where I started to now um, from in the early, in the mid, I moved here in 1986, mm -hmm. it's 2016. I mean, I can see where it has just quadrupled. Mm -hmm. um, I have a food pantry in my home, and I mean, I'm always preparing a bag of groceries for a family, or not, a bag of grocery for a single, but for a family, it's four or five bags. And while I do understand that there are other areas, for instance, Lars has a food pantry and they give out groceries and there are a number of churches that give out groceries, it's still not enough mm -hmm. because people run out of, of food and they're calling me for food and I'm happy to give that to them. Um, 
again, for me, the focus is not the food. The focus is not that I get up in the morning and prepare meals. I want to connect people with services to make them more self-sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, if whether that will be, you know, job training, um, uh, education. Um, I wrote back in 1995 a development plan. I wrote it for myself because I was going through domestic violence and when my baby was killed I went through a couple of years of re rehabbing, rebranding myself because I was very depressed, I was very hurt and I didn't really know where to start. Mm -hmm. So I started writing down and journaling steps and aspirations of things that I want want to do for my wanted to do for myself and here I am 2016 never ever imagining that I would be an elected official and the development plan that I wrote for myself I would like to have a development plan for each and every person that I serve whether it be um, helping them connect with job training, whether it be um, education, whether it be joining some sort of support group, um, whether it be uh, connecting them with a family member, because a lot of the residents that I serve have barriers with family, you know, there are family issues with them. Mm -hmm. And they um, said, oh, I wish I could talk to my, my sister. She lives in uh, New York or she lives in Pennsylvania or she lives somewhere else and I don't have the money to even call. So I'll buy them a phone card. I've even bought people cell phones and paid their monthly bills. I did that for about six months. And it's not a problem to do it. I'm not looking for accolades for myself. Mm -hmm. I really just want to serve people. I, that's that's just very important to me. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, like you said, you know, it seems like you're going to be the collaborator between all these different agencies who aren't communicating with each other. You know, um, um, one thing that I realized um, within reading and researching is the fact that each area is trying to solve the problem on their own, right? So DC is creating these shelters. Um, per, I think they're called temporary um, housing yes. uh, all around the different wards. Yes. That's the way they're trying to solve it. Maryland's trying to, you know, grapple with the issue too. And it's like there needs to be some kind of interagency communication to see, okay, what's going on in your area? How can we, you know, solve the issue? One of the things that um, when I was talking to Stephanie at Lars, she said one of the biggest issues that um, they face is people who are substance abusers. Yes. And, um, and she said that is a big issue, especially in Laurel. Um, what do you, I guess, think about that? Do you have any thoughts on um, maybe organizations or anything like that that could be able to kind of step in and help with, with that issue uh, as well as, like, like you said, the counseling issue, I mean, the counseling um, needs and... Well, I'd first like to thank the mayor of mm -hmm. D.C. Mm -hmm. for her idea of um, having the individual housing in the different mm -hmm. wards. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there should be for other, well, whether it be D.C., Maryland, Baltimore, I think there should be a collaboration of one agency um, that is representing, we, you have a person or a group or an association that represents all of those areas in one place. Mm -hmm. Because I think what where the breakdown is, is you may have DC doing something, mm -hmm. you may have Laurel doing something, you may have Baltimore doing something, and no one is talking. We could, we could if we formed a team, I think um, we could be much more powerful mm -hmm. and we could be able to provide even more services if we put our money together or if we were able to go after some of the grants that would address the substance abuse. It is the substance abuse, alcohol and mental health is paramount. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I, I can't even explain some of the um, families that have just been torn apart because of substance abuse and alcoholism and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to spearhead something like that or, or form partnerships with, even with the churches and nonprofits and local, state, and federal agencies that would want to at least come to the table so we could just brainstorm about how we could uh, put something in place. Because you have some, like for instance, I have families that run from D.C. to Laurel, to maybe uh, 
Ellicott City or to Elkridge because they're trying to get a hotel. Mm. You know, you've got the hotel game. It's um, one place maybe seventy dollars, another place maybe sixty-five, and you've got families with children that are hopping from place to place. Mm -hmm. They charge you an extra twenty or thirty or forty dollars if you want to use a microwave, if you want to have a hot plate, and in those hotel settings, you've got all kinds of problems. You've got your drug addicts, mental health, and then you've got the children that are so innocent, and it's not a positive environment for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd like to see dialogue. I'd like to see something else, and I make myself open to any organization, any nonprofit, any church, or people, groups that just want to get together and, let's, and talk about just addressing how we can make someone's life better. As, as of right now in Maryland, what I see is um, a response to, or more of a reaction to how people are reacting. So for example, um, you know, heroin is a very big issue. Um, yes. the, governor, the governor has made it, you know, he's called a state of emergency because of it. Yes. And um, now, you know, now um, people who are emergency, um, like paramedics, they can now issue that drug um, you know, basically right on site right. for somebody who's overdosing on heroin. Right. And it's like, okay, well, now that we're addressed, now we're addressing the issue, okay, how do we get ahead of it? You see what I mean? Right. Um, you know, I can't talk about being a drug user or an alcohol user because I never did drugs. Mm -hmm. My thing was I went into a very deep depression. <clears throat> I'm saying that to say that I believe that the heroin addicts that are out and the alcohol alcoholics that are there mm -hmm. is because they gave up. So they don't feel like there's anything else for them. Um, there are services where they go to rehabs, but you find that they go come out the rehab and they go back to the street. So there's no what is the what is the what are they what do they have to look forward to? Mm. There is no easy answer. I realize that. I just think me, myself, just doing what I can do to make someone's life better, one person at a time or one family at a time, it's good, but of course it's not enough. I think the biggest thing that we're going to have to do is organizations like Lars, um, the churches, um, uh, the housing authorities at the local, federal, and state level, we really need to come together. I think that mm -hmm. may not be, that's not the end all be all, but I think it would be the beginning of something, having representation from each area of each town. Mm -hmm. So you can tell us what's going on in your community because to have someone sitting there generically just talking about mm -hmm. homeless in general mm -hmm. is not fixing the problem. You know, being out there and being on the street and seeing what they're going through is sad, particular, particularly when you find families that have kids mm -hmm. because you're looking at now the, the challenge of the school system. Okay, what school are they going to go to? Because this week they're at this hotel that falls under this district, and then two weeks later they're someplace else. And it's just it's, it's a domino effect, and it's affecting everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. we won't even talk about once that 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 child that grows up and goes into uh, getting in a gang or turn into drugs. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a rotating circle and it needs to be stopped at that young age. My godmother always says the first five years of a child's life and uh, you know, you've got to really zero in because after that it's hard. I mean, I've, I don't have a degree in education but I've heard several educators say the same thing. So again, I think the, the biggest thing right now we're gonna have to do is come together, come to the table, and let's talk about the issues in these communities, representation from each place, and we come up with a game plan of how can we address this. Mm -hmm. Again, giving them a bag of groceries is not the fix. Putting them in a, um, a drug rehab for a week is not the fix because when they get out, they go right back to what they're comfortable with and what they're used to. You have to break the cycle. You have to break the silence to break the cycle is what I tell people with domestic violence. For years, I walked around as a, I was being abused in silence. You know, I worked for a United States senator, and I would go to a makeup artist in the morning before I went to work because both of my eyes was black, and I had whip, whips and, and bruises all over my face and arms. 
because I was too afraid to tell somebody because I had no self-esteem mm -hmm. and I just figured, oh, well, this will be over soon because eventually he will kill me. I had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of living that way. The same concept goes for people that are on the street, for mm -hmm. people that are on drugs. Mm -hmm. They ha You have to decide that you want to make a change. The mindset has to change. You can give them counseling. You can give them a place to stay. It doesn't matter. This has to change. No, it's not going to be easy, but it would be the beginning if we could just form a dialogue to talk about what can we do. Is there anything else that I didn't ask you you think is important to mention before we wind down the interview? Well, I think um, one of the things I like to say is everybody, you know, that I talk to, you know, they'll say, Val, you know, how do you, how are you going out and you're feeding these people and you're talking to this person that's reeking with an odor and, you know, alcohol or drugs? Uh, you know, and I say to them, you know, we're all people, you know, we're all God's people. The first thing I want to want people to know is that, you know, I serve Jesus Christ. You know, that's very important to me. And if mm -hmm. we're living according to our biblical principles, then we're supposed to be out helping people. The second thing I want to say is that everybody that is on the street is not on drugs. They're not. I mean, I've met two gentlemen that I've been feeding now for many, many years that have PhDs that just gave up on life because of some horrific event that may have been, I think one guy told me it was a divorce, another guy said it was a tragedy that happened in his family. He was a professor and he never recovered mm -hmm. because he didn't seek help. Mm -hmm. So when you try to, you know, just say, I'm just going to give up, I'm just going to do it on my own, you can fall easily fall into mm -hmm. uh, drug abuse or, or alcoholism. So I just say that, you know, just know that everybody is not on drugs. You know, help somebody. I, I'm a strong advocate in paying it forward. I believe that we're supposed to help people. No, I don't, I'm not saying that we should open up our bank accounts and give someone every dime, but if you're in the position to help somebody, do it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you thank for having you. me. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm.